Hello everyone, this is a compilation of my favorite free YouTube loose leash walking tutorials that I've created over the years on YouTube. However, if you watch through all these videos and you're feeling super overwhelmed as to where to start, I do actually have a six week course on loose leash walking on my website, dogmantics.com called Leash Walking Connected. And it's geared more towards people who have been struggling with their dog with loose leash walking because of over arousal and potentially reactivity and fear. So that course breaks the exercise exercises up into six weeks and it actually tells you how much to train each exercise each week to to be able to progress to the next weeks and with the eventual sixth week going over some pretty advanced loose leash walking games hi everyone this video is on proactive training tips for leash walking with your new puppy or an adult dog as you can see, my puppy is full of beans, she's very active, and if I were to just go out and put a leash on her, you would see some really not very uh, wonderful footage of her pulling on leash. So the way that I train is using positive reinforcement, and the way that you train is you set the dog up for success uh, in small approximations. Now, a lot of times people ask me, why are you not showing your dog pulling like a maniac, biting at the leash, biting at your clothes? And the answer is, is that when animals rehearse a behavior, um, no matter what type of training you do, that rehearsal of the behavior is going to make it more likely to happen in the future than if the animal never did it at, at all. So with leash walking, um, with a young puppy or a new adult dog, it's going to be very frustrating to be attached to someone by a leash and if that first experience is out on a walk when they're excited and they're not wanting to take treats and they pull towards something and they want to get to it and suddenly they feel that uh, tension on the leash and they're blocked from getting somewhere, um, that's going to potentially cause them to pull more or get frustrated, turn around and bite the leash. So if we can train the puppies what it, how, reinforce them, how to put their harness on, what it feels like, to feel that tension on the leash and what it means to come back to you, as well as teach them where to walk inside your house and in your yard if they're not distracted out there. First, before then attempting to walk them, um, it's going to set your training up for success. So I'm going to show you footage of what my puppy was like the first day I got her and how excitable she can be bounding around in an open space. And then the first walk that we had together on leash you can see she's really calm and confident and understands the concept of walking next to me. Now if I had just put her on the leash, you can imagine that she would have just immediately hit the end of the leash and wondered what was going on. Now I'll show you what we worked on to get here. The first thing I did was mark and reinforce her for standing at my side and also for walking at my side like this. So I'd take a step forward, mark, and then reinforce. Because I wanted to walk her with my other dogs, I worked on this exercise. If I had just put her on a leash with my other dogs on a walk, she most likely would have pulled towards them, tried to jump on them and play with them while we're walking. By breaking up the steps to be small and easy, where she's first ignoring the other dogs while they're laying still, and then moving calmly together off leash at my home, you can see it set her up for success to completely ignore my dogs on a walk. I also played leash and harness games, teaching her to be comfortable having her harness put on and taken off without biting at it, teaching her to ignore the leash when it moves around her, and teaching her that the pressure on the leash simply means to come back to me. I put a link to the video tutorial on how to train these in the description below. If you have a dog or puppy who is already off to a bad start, pulling on their leash, biting at their leash, the wonderful thing is, is you can go back and work on those behaviors in a place that your puppy or dog is comfortable, so inside your living room. And that's where I worked on Epic's behaviors, right here in this living room, where she was comfortable and found the treats highly reinforcing. The problem with trying to train when out and about using food is that the dog's motivation is to want to explore 
usually, unless they're worried. And then if they're worried, then they're not feeling hungry either. So the best time to build positive associations and train new behaviors is in a non-distracting environment, even if it's a behavior that's something that you're going to be doing outside. So if your dog is struggling or your dog has a regression and starts pulling on leash or um, starts biting at the leash, you can work on all those behaviors in brush up sessions inside your house, in your yard, and out front where the dog is interested in what you have as reinforcement. Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to go over the cue, let's go. This is not only a useful cue for shy, reactive, and overexcited dogs, but it's a great cue to teach any dog. Basically, let's go means I'm moving in the other direction and I want you to move wi with me. So for example, if your dog is sniffing and you want to continue on a walk, you can say let's go, or perhaps you've stopped at a street light and then the light changes, you can tell your dog let's go to tell your dog that you're moving. Or perhaps your dog is greeting another dog and you want your dog to turn away from that other dog. It's very useful for shy and reactive dogs. If they start looking like they're going to bark, you can give your dog the cue, let's go, and stop your dog from offering that unwanted behavior of acting overexcited. Okay, so this is Gremlin, and Gremlin's not learned this cue yet. Um, Gremlin's very new to clicker training, so I'm going to go over right from the start how you would train this cue. In conjunction with teaching let's go, you should teach your dog to give in to leash pressure. Here is a video tutorial on how to teach this. Then, if you say let's go and your dog doesn't come with you, you can move your dog in an emergency situation. I like to hold the leash and the clicker in my left hand with, when the dog is on my left side and feed with my right hand. However, if you're not experienced with this and getting the treat to your dog only behind your heel and far back on your left side, your dog could start to creep in front of you and you get a dog that's anticipating you feeding them and walking in front of you like this, blocking your foot movement. So if you find that happening, you can try holding the leash in your right hand and feeding the dog with the treat in your left hand. Good job. Step one, click your dog for moving with you. The first step to teaching let's go is encouraging your dog to walk with you on a loose leash. You can either do that by walking forwards, hi, come on, pop ups, and encouraging your dog with your voice or patting your leg, or you can walk backwards and click your dog for following you on a loose leash. Come on, pop ups. If you notice that your dog is just looking at the treats and following you, you can hide the treats behind your back and encourage your dog with your voice and your body movement. Come on, gremlin. Yeah, awesome. Step two add turns. Now, while your dog's moving with you, you can start to turn and encourage your dog to move in the opposite direction with your voice. You can pat your leg. Pop, pop, puppy. Good job. Hi. Good job. Step three, adding the cue. If your dog is moving with you, you can move on to the next step. But if your dog's not moving with you, I would suggest working on encouraging your dog to move with you first. Now, the next step is adding your cue. So you say your cue, let's go, change directions, and click your dog for coming in the direction that you've changed. Gremlin, let's go. If your dog is lagging when you make the turn, you can throw the treat forwards. So let's go, and then throw the treat in front of you. If your dog is racing around the corner and going ahead of you, you can put the treat down on the ground after you click so you can get a couple of steps before your dog catches up to you. Ready? Come on, let's go. Good girl. Good job. Awesome. Once you've done this for a couple of training sessions, you can start to proof your cue, let's go, by adding distractions. Are you ready? Step four. Proofing with distractions. I'm going to put some treats down on this rock as a distraction and hold my dog back so that she can't get them while I'm putting them down. Then I'm going to use my cue, let's go. Good job. If your dog doesn't turn with you, you can just try from further away. Ready, Grandma? Let's go. Awesome. Good 
Enjoy. For shy and reactive dogs, you want to proof the cue, let's go, using distractions that your dog loves, like food and toys, so your dog has a positive association with the cue. You also want to practice your cue, let's go, when there's nothing scary or intimidating in the environment. Otherwise, if you're only saying it when there's something creepy, your dog can learn that when you say let's go, it means that there's something creepy. For shy, reactive, or aggressive dogs, you can use your cue, let's go, before your dog starts lunging and barking to prevent the behavior from happening, and you can give your dog a treat for turning with you. However, if your dog has already started lunging and barking, you can use the cue, let's go, but do not give your dog a treat, as you could reinforce the lunging and barking as well. Instead, give your dog a treat the next time he turns with you without barking, but make it easier for him to be able to succeed. The goal in training is to prevent your dog from barking and lunging. If your dog doesn't listen to you when you say let's go, you can use the techniques described in the video, giving into leash pressure, to move your dog away from the trigger. Hi everybody, this video is on the topic of teaching your puppy what to do when he feels pressure on leash, either when he's run out and hit the end of the leash, or when you've had to add pressure, say for example your puppy runs into the road and you need to move your puppy out of the road using leash pressure. Now of course you can pick your puppy up in emergencies, but if you have a puppy that's going to turn into a larger adult dog, at some point in his life you're going to need to have to move your puppy with the leash. Now without any prior training, most puppies and dogs when you pull on their leash, they one, find it aversive, and two, usually lean the other way. The same with human beings. If you had a harness tied around your chest with a leash coming out of it and someone pulled on it, you naturally would counterbalance by leaning backwards rather than just following whoever pulls you. So basically, in this exercise, we're teaching puppies that when they feel the pressure on the leash, it's simply a cue saying, come with me, we're moving in a different direction. And by creating a positive association with the feeling of pressure on the leash, it simply becomes a cue for the dog to want to move with you. Now, if you work on this exercise with a young puppy right from the beginning, before the puppy starts pulling a lot on the leash when you're out and about, it actually can teach your puppy to walk on a loose leash. This is because if you work on the exercise enough, your dog is going to have a conditioned response where they feel the pressure on the leash and it will cue them to come back to you. Here are some exercises you should work on first before playing the leash pressure game with your puppy. This is because you want to reinforce your puppy for moving towards you, moving with you, and moving with you when you make direction changes. And once you've reinforced all of these behaviors, it will make it way easier for the puppy to want to choose to move with you when you add the leash pressure. In my opinion, the four exercises that you want to work on first are the attention game, the recall, reinforcing your puppy for standing next to you and walking next to you, and reinforcing your puppy for direction changes while walking at your side. Check out the written description below for links to video tutorials on how to train these. This is footage of one of our first outings to the park. After letting my puppy explore and sniff the park, I spent one to two minutes playing the attention game, reinforcing the position at my side, and direction changes. The leash pressure game. Step one. Add light pressure on the leash as you lower your puppy forward and then feed a treat. The point of this step is to accustom the puppy to the sensation of the leash pressure so it's not a sudden surprise. I suggest attaching the leash to your dog's harness when you play games like this as well as walk your dog. If you're going to be walking your dog with the leash attached to the front of your dog's harness, you need to work on this exercise with the leash attached to the front as well as the back. 
Keep an eye on your puppy's tail and make sure it's in a natural position and the puppy is not tucking their tail. If the puppy starts to tuck the tail, you can work on games like the attention game, the recall, as well as handling exercises rather than working on the leash pressure game yet. Step two, put a distraction down on the ground that makes the puppy pull on leash. Use your attention noise or a treat lure to get your puppy to turn around and come back to you. Pop, pop. What to do if your puppy doesn't turn around? One, practice from further away from the distraction. You can have a helper put down the distraction to make this easier. Two, use a lower value treat as the distraction and a higher value treat as the reinforcer. Step three, put a distraction down on the ground that makes the puppy pull on leash. When the puppy is on a tight leash, move in the opposite direction of the puppy without jerking him. Mark and reinforce when you see your puppy turn in your direction. If the puppy doesn't turn toward you within two seconds, use your attention noise or treat lure to get your puppy to turn around and come back to you. Good boy! Good boy! Mark the moment the puppy turns towards you and feed the puppy the treat Good. as close to your body as you can to train the puppy to come all the way to you. Mark and reinforce multiple times for the puppy Good being boy. at your side or being in front of you before you repeat the exercise. If your puppy sits or lays down, simply revert back to using the treat lure. So she went out. She felt the leash pressure, and that made her want to come back and not be on a tight leash. Basically, you're teaching the dog when they feel the tight leash, they should come near you to loosen the leash. Now, if you keep proofing this game, your dog is going to generalize it. So you can use different types of food, different types of toys, different types of people and dogs and uh, places to sniff, like a fire hydrant. Um, you're going to teach your dog when they see things they want, the only way to get there is on a loose leash. Hey, pop -ups. So I'm going to move the distraction over here and do it again again. So pressure on the leash, click and feed. What you're not doing is jerking your dog. You're holding the leash against your body to move your dog. Good job. And be careful that you don't back up and trip on something because that happens to me a lot, especially in public. Step four. Practice with different distractions in different situations. I suggest playing this game for one to two minutes, 10 to 12 times in the first few weeks that you own your new puppy or dog. This is Martina's Border Collie Lumos at six months and you can see he has a positive emotional response when he feels the pressure on the leash and he knows what to do when he feels the pressure. If you notice your dog starts to pull again, it's a great idea to go back and do brush up training sessions. Here's an example of working on the leash pressure game with a high level distraction. If something is too much for your dog, you'll notice that they won't be able to turn away from the distraction. So if this happens, you need to make the distraction less exciting or move further away from the distraction. If you're doing this exercise correctly, you'll find that your puppy will stop pulling altogether. This is a good thing. If he keeps trying to go for the distraction, it means the distraction is too difficult, too close, or you need to spend more time marking and reinforcing him for staying with you after he comes back. In real life situations, if your puppy starts pulling on leash, you can simply back up until he is on a loose leash, then wait a bit until you have made a connection with him again before walking forward.
this video we're going to go over a leash technique that you can use with shy, reactive, and overexcited dogs. It's called giving in to leash pressure. At first, when you put pressure on a leash, dogs can get either overexcited, over aroused, or even scared by the pressure you put on your dog's leash. But in, d in dangerous situations or in emergencies, or if your dog's getting overexcited, you need to move your dog when your dog's not listening to you. So I'm going to teach you how to teach your dog the default behavior of when you put pressure on leash, it means move with me instead of move away from me. Naturally, dogs tend to move in the opposite direction when you put pressure on the leash. And that can be very frustrating if you're trying to get away from something your dog's scared of or if your dog's overexcited about something. This is Gremlin. She's my friend's new rescue dog from Spain. She's about seven months old and she's very scared and reactive in the city. So we're going to practice in this calm environment where she feels comfortable how to give in to leash pressure so that when she's got the behavior down, she can start using it in the city where she's frightened. Okay, Gremlin, are you ready? I have a video called Handling Shyness. If your dog is very scared of being handled and touched, you want to do the exercises in that video first before you start doing this exercise. Because if your dog is very scared, or if you start the exercise and find that your dog is getting very scared of what you're doing, you need to go back a step and condition your dog to being handled and being touched in the area that the harness is rest resting. This shouldn't be the first training game that you play with your dog. You should play some attention games and loose leash walking games to reinforce your dog for being with you and moving with you on leash beforehand. I recommend using a harness for this exercise because if you're putting pressure on your dog's neck, it can actually damage your dog's neck. Dog's necks are very similar in their construction as human necks and pulling on a dog's neck isn't a great way to make a good impression and it's not a great way to manage your dog on a walk. So that's why we're always using the harness attached to a leash for a walk. Okay, Gremlin, let's give it a try. So first, I'm gonna just warm Gremlin up by moving and clicking Gremlin for moving with me. Build our relationship a little bit. step, I'm going to put just gentle pressure on the leash and click and feed. Another option is simply pulling on the harness and feeding. You want the pressure on the harness to predict a treat. If you find that your dog is comfortable and not freaking out or backing away, you can move on to the next step. I'm going to put gentle, even pressure on the harness. I'm not jerking the dog. I'm putting the harness, I'm putting the leash against my stomach and taking a step forwards. And I'm going to click when Grandma takes a step in my direction, giving into the pressure. Good job. Immediately after I click, I'm going to release the pressure and give a treat. Good job. Let's see if you have, if I have a treat that's a little bit of higher value because Gremlin's not seeming that interested in those other treats. You like that? Okay. Good. Awesome job. There's also loud gunshot, <laughs> so I'm feeding Gremlin for hearing the gunshot and not panicking. Good job. If your dog doesn't come with the leash pressure or is getting scared, you can do another trick where you're just putting pressure on the leash and luring the dog forwards. You don't want this to be a scary, intimidating game. Good job. You can also encourage your dog with your voice or a kissy noise. Good job. Oh my goodness, you got that whole piece. Oh boy. Ready? 
Awesome. Gremlins seemed a little nervous during the training session and didn't seem to find the treats very reinforcing, so we took a break and cooked some chicken. You want to use the highest value of reinforcement possible and have your dog as relaxed as possible when starting this exercise. You can tell that Gremlin is feeling a little bit better because you can see that the muscles in her body are more relaxed and she's holding her tail much higher than she was before. Proofing with distractions. Once your dog is happily moving into leash pressure, you can start to proof the behavior with distractions. You want to use distractions that your dog likes. So for example, toys, treats, or people that your dog likes, holding treats, or just people that your dog wants to greet. We're going to use a toy that Gremlin really likes. Oh boy, good job. If it's too hard for your dog, and they just continue to pull forwards, you can try getting your dog to move with you from further away from the distraction. Good job. And your dog will be more successful. Awesome. If you've moved further away from the distraction and your dog still won't give in to leash pressure, try a low value distraction. So something your dog is less interested in so that you can set your dog up for success. It also helps if you have a helper to place the distraction away from your dog. Awesome. The end result is that your dog should stop pulling on leash towards the distraction. So don't worry if that's happening. That's something that you want to occur. We're also going to try a distraction of food. So I'm going to put the food over here and have Gremlin move away. And Gremlin is so smart, she's figured out the game already. Good girl. At first you're gonna click the millisecond the dog turns to come with you. And then when your dog is succeeding, you can click your dog after they've taken a couple steps in your direction after turning. It's your choice whether you wanna release your dog to get the treat or whether you don't want to release your dog. But I would say don't always release your dog or otherwise they could think that you're going to release them and then run towards whatever you're pulling them away from. Okay, go get it. For shy and fearful dogs. When out on a walk and your dog suddenly starts getting very frightened and won't give in to leash pressure and just puts on the brakes after you've worked on it, it could be a sign that your dog is very fearful and it might be a good idea to just go home or if you have a dog that's small enough, just pick your dog up until your dog's calmed down enough to be able to walk again. It can be very frightening if your dog hasn't had the proper socialization as a puppy and you can't really work through it if your dog is not taking treats and overly fearful. Giving into leash pressure should be used for emergencies when your dog won't listen to you and you need to move your dog. If you simply want your dog to move with you, you can teach a verbal cue like let's go to mean move with me. I'm going to be proofing the let's go and the leash pressure exercise with some sprinkled kibble in the grass over there. So I have better treats than kibble and I'm going to say let's go and that's easy for Splash. That might not be easy for your dog. Ready? Go sniff. So I've cued her to go snuffle around for the kibble and I'm going to say, let's go. And if she doesn't listen, I'm going to show her the better treat and go pop, 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 pop. Awesome. And now she knows I have something better than the kibble in the grass. Ready? Go sniff. Let's go. Yes, that was good. Good. And you can use a high rate of reinforcement for the dog coming to you so they're getting treats faster than they would if they sniffed around in the grass ignoring you. Splash is snuffling around for some kibble. I have higher value treats. I'm not going to jerk her but I'm going to add gentle even pressure and click her for coming in my direction. That was pretty easy for her so I sprinkled some harder 
higher value treats in the grass. I'm not gonna, this is an emergency um, behavior if your dog doesn't listen to you. So I'm just gonna add gentle, even pressure. Maybe she's sniffing the smell of a dog's pee and there's a car coming and we need to move or there's uh, an aggressive dog running at us and I need to move her on leash. She's gotta know that what that leash pressure means and to move even if she's snuffling around for kibble in the grass. Good, okay, go sniff. You rather have treats? Go sniff. Go sniff. What's that? Ooh, look right there. Good. This video is on some tips for teaching loose leash walking. Frequently, I get asked the same question by clients as well as from YouTube or in emails that a person's dog has been walking nicely on leash after a lot of training and some time's gone by and now the dog is pulling again and uh, it feels overwhelming and what should they do to get the pulling to go away. So um, in my opinion, some of the things that can really, really help is refreshing the dog on the leash pressure game. So. After some time, if you haven't worked on it and every once in a while the dog pulls a little bit, they can start forgetting about that concept that pressure on the leash means orient back to the handler. So when clients tell me this, I suggest that they do at least 12 sessions on the leash pressure game inside the house, in their yard, in front of their house, and places that it's easy using distractions that you make up so that you can work with your dog when they're 100% focused on the training rather than when they're excited and out and about. Check out the description below for a video tutorial on how to train the leash pressure exercise. Another really important thing to consider is that when a dog is not pulling and then pulling, it means that something's changed. So the dog could be getting overly stressed in a good way or a bad way that's making him forget all that he's learned and he's pulling. So he might be um, feeling negative emotional responses like he's nervous about something in the, envir in the environment and that's speeding him up and making him forget to uh, practice impulse control and walk at the same pace as you so he wants to speed up. Um, or he's uh, having a positive emotional response and he's like, yeah, I got to get to that, I got to get to this. And that could be because he has not been in that environment before or something about it is novel and exciting. Maybe there's a new dog that's been up that street and he wants to sniff every single place that dog has been. Uh, maybe you're walking with a new dog or a person. Or it could be that uh, the dog is starting to anticipate something good that's going to happen that's further away. So for example, if you um, go to a baseball field where your dog is going to then run off leash, at first it's really easy to walk to the baseball field, but after a couple of repetitions, the dog might start actually to be pulling you towards the baseball field and stressed because um, he really wants to be in that field playing off leash and not <laughs> walking slowly at your side at a snail's pace. So in these situations, I suggest doing the same thing. Um, if the dog is nervous about the environment, I suggest choosing an environment the dog is least nervous about and working on settle on a mat. So the dog is just relaxing on a mat and getting reinforced for being in that environment. You could even do calm massage. So if the dog hasn't learned settle on a mat yet, you can practice that inside the house and in the yard first. So the dog is finding it a calming, positive experience to be relaxing on the mat. Don't start with, uh, with any dog with the settle outside first um, where they're excited or nervous. Uh, the same is true for dogs that are excited about the environment. They want to, going into the environment is predicting that they're getting to things that they're very excited about. So relaxing on a mat is a great way to teach them to calm down in those environments and that being out doesn't mean doing exciting things and rushing towards things they want to investigate. So what you can do is have the dog relax on the mat after training and then you can take little outings where you move from the mat 
to go and investigate the environment and then return to the mat so the dog can take a little break rather than keeping on going. The worst is sometimes for dogs, if they're, if they're going in a circuit and they know the circuit, um, that's going to make them want to continue forward. So you can have the mat and you take little voyages away from the mat and return if the dog's getting too excited. And you can also practice things, for example, if you uh, have a house on a street that you walk on, instead of walking in the same circuit, you can be either random or if you really have an issue with pulling, you can walk back and forth in front of your house. So you walk a little bit one way, then you turn around and go the other way. And the great thing about this is that the dog has already smelled everything in that area, so they become less and less excited about going back and forth. And as they're succeeding, you can venture further and further away rather than going in a complete circuit. Now, if you need extra help with these exercises, I do actually have a six-week self-study course on my website called Leash Walking Connected on dogmantics.com that I'm very proud of that it, it's really helpful for people who need the steps broken up um, so that they know exactly what to train each week with each exercise to get their dog back on track to walking on a loose leash. But I do have a lot of free YouTube videos um, so the two that I talked about, Settle on the Mat, I will link in the description below. And then also I want to show you a game that you can play inside your house first to teach your dog to stop when you stop. And if you have multiple dogs, it's extremely important to play this game where you're practicing walking multiple dogs in your house first, in your backyard first, before trying to walk multiple dogs outside because things are going to go a little bit haywire and just the presence of the other dog on leash can make your dog um, very excited. So when first initiating having two dogs on leash on a walk, I suggest doing it in your living room and outside first, so being next to each other uh, has predicted in the past that they pay attention to you and get treats in a non-distracting environment rather than woohoo time to pull uh, my owner down the block. Teaching your dog to stop when you stop is a wonderful behavior to build your relationship with your dog so they're more likely to notice your behavior out and about on a walk because most likely without any training if you were to suddenly stop while your dog's walking forward, they're not going to notice and they're just going to hit the end of the leash. Um, another wonderful reason to teach this behavior if you have multiple dogs is that when you stop um, to let another dog sniff, maybe the other dog is near the grass and the other dog's on the side of the sidewalk that has cars, uh, that dog can politely wait while the other dog is sniffing. Now, in no way do I, am I say, saying that all dogs should learn to walk next to you for walks. Um, what I think is more natural is for dogs to be off leash, enjoying and exploring and making choices and staying with you, um, or exploring the environment on a loose leash next to you. So you don't have to teach your dog to walk next to you um, for your dog's benefit, but when managing your dog in busy environments, say for example the city where you have to keep your dog close, or if you're going to a vet or there's an emergency, say you're evacuating for a fire, it's great to have this skill so your dog knows to stay near you, especially if you have multiple dogs and you need to have them all on leash um, to evacuate in an emergency or go to the vet or, or you're on vacation. Um, and, you're go and you've gone somewhere where there are more people. So that's why it's great to teach your dog to walk next to you, but there's no real benefit to it besides management. And it is, when you train it with positive reinforcement, it's a great way to build your relationship and connection with your dog. So the first step is simply feeding your dog at your side like this, multiple treats like this, and the reason you're doing that is because you're reinforcing your dog for staying still at your side. Because most dogs, if they're standing next to you, will gravitate to being in front of you so they can see you, see your face, and most people train their dogs in front of them like this. So what we're teaching the dog is to be at the side. So you can lure your dog back into the position if they go in front of you again, or if they go in front, you can simply take a step to the right and then begin the game again. Once your dog is reliably standing at your side, 
when you're standing, you can then take a step forwards, click, and reinforce your dog at your side before your dog has a chance to take a step in front of you. So you're going to take a step, click, and reinforce. If you have a tall dog, you can reinforce your dog right there in front of his face and then pull your hand behind your back so he's not just staring at your hand the whole time. Tug said, I can stare at your hand while it's behind your back. So if that's happening, you can make sure your dog is looking up here, then staring at the treat in your hand. Hi. Okay. So once you're taking a step, marking and reinforcing your dog at your side, you can then take a step and wait to see if your dog stops when you stop. So I'm going to take a step forwards and I might have to say, let's go Tug. Stop, mark and reinforce. You can reinforce your dog for sitting, but there's no real reason that um, they need to sit at your side. So if your dog starts to sit, you can encourage them out of the sit by the way that you hold the treat. Are you ready? So I'm going to take a step. Let's go. Good. Good. It might take a few training sessions for your dog to get the idea of stopping when you stop, but once he's got it and you walk forwards and he stops when you stop, you can start adding steps. So you're going to take more steps before you stop and reinforce your dog. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Good. If you have multiple dogs, once you've practiced with the dogs one-on-one -on, -one on this exercise, you can then start working with them together inside your house. This is also very helpful because you can start to understand how to manage both of their leashes in your hand or in both of your hands while you're still in the house and they're not pulling in every which way excited that they're next to each other on a walk. So um, I'm going to mark and reinforce them for being at my side like this. Good job, Tug. And then I'm going to take a step forwards, mark and reinforce. And as you can see, now they're having to wait as they watch the treats go to the other dog. So sometimes the dogs will want to go forwards towards each other to go see where their treat is going. Like Tug might go over here into Wish's space, and that's not going to be very fun. So um, this is great to work on in your house when they're not excited about being out and about. And then when you're out and about, maybe you won't even use treats uh, when working with both of the dogs. But if you have dogs that guard treats or they're just not good with, with each other, I suggest getting help from a professional trainer that doesn't use any forms of intimidation to work on this first. But one of the games you can work on first if you're working with multiple dogs together is teaching them to take turns for taking treats and I'll put that um, in the description below. Let's go. Good. Let's go. Here I'm playing the same game, but with both dogs on my left side. It can be useful to have all your dogs on one side of you. If you're using your body as a blocker, perhaps there's a child that's running around that wants to mess with your dogs, or maybe there's a dog that needs space, and that dog's going to be much more comfortable with your body blocking the view of your dogs. Or if your dog has an issue with other dogs, you can be the visual blocker for your dogs. Now I'm playing the same game with my dogs in their loose walking positions. I like to let them walk in front of me and at my side when they're in a big group so they have room to look around and explore. And as you can see, this exercise is a great exercise to get them all focused on me and my movement because when I stop another dog might be needing to sniff or go to the bathroom and the other ones can wait. This video is on the concept of how to teach your dog leave it from little bits of food or trash or perhaps rabbit poop that he might encounter when on a walk with you on or off leash. Now it's extremely important to first work on some foundation behaviors and I have video tutorials on how to train all of them in the video description below and those videos are the attention game, the recall to build your relationship with your dog, as well as the leash pressure game and the leave it exercise. By working on the leash pressure game and the leave it exercise, you can then have the foundation steps for teaching your dog leave it 
a default leave it from things in the environment, say for example out on a walk, if you never want your dog to pick up trash or little bits of food when out and about, you can teach your dog the concept that everything on the ground is leave it unless you specifically tell your dog he can get those items. A very important question that I get asked frequently is if someone's on a walk with their puppy or adult dog and they're training them to leave things alone when out and about and then the dog picks, finds something, picks it up and then the owner cues the dog to drop the item or leave the item and then gives the dog a treat, won't that teach the dog to go and find trash to pick up so he can then drop it in order to get a treat? And the answer is yes, that could possibly happen, especially if the dog is ignored and never reinforced at other moments during the walk. If the highlight of the walk is picking up trash, getting told to drop it, and then getting reinforcement, then it's really going to reinforce some part of that behavior of walking over and picking up whatever it is. So, training your dog when out and about on a walk where you can't see what's in the grass and they go and pick something up is not the most effective way to train a dog. The way that you want to train when using positive reinforcement is you don't want the dog to be creating errors or doing the behavior you don't want first. So the behavior that you don't want is the dog going towards whatever it is with the intention of sniffing, eating, or picking up the object. Instead, you want the cue of seeing that item in the environment or smelling it, you want that to be the cue to do a default leave it rather than go and investigate. So to train that, the best way to do this is to set up training sessions where you're proofing the behavior in fun games where you know where all the treats are hidden and you can make it fun and easy for your dog to have impulse control walking past those distractions in order to gain a treat rather than the confusion when out and about on a walk of finding something amazing and then being told to drop it and then getting reinforcement for that. So what I suggest is that if you've noticed that your dog is starting to have a problem with uh, picking up rabbit poop or little bits of trash, instead of trying to train your dog on the walk, you go home and you set up training sessions where you really proof the behavior of teaching your dog the default leave it, of walking past those distractions on leash, off leash, doing recalls past that distraction, doing tricks near that distraction where the dog can completely leave it alone confidently and happily, then when on a walk and your dog goes towards something to go pick it up, you can use your cue leave it or if your dog picks something up, you can use your cue drop it, but then you're not going to give a treat right after the dog has gone to investigate those items. Instead, you can wait a little bit and perhaps ask the dog for a behavior that he's really good at, you know, maybe 30 seconds later and then reinforce that behavior and make sure that on the walks you're not just constantly reinforcing your dog for leaving things after they've already initiated going towards them. Instead, what you could do if you wanted to work on a walk on the problem with your dog picking up stuff is you go and you find a distraction, you cue your dog to leave it and you can mark and reinforce your dog immediately as they understand the game rather than waiting for the dog to first start doing the behavior you don't like to interrupt it, if that makes sense. So the whole point um, of, of teaching using positive reinforcement is setting the learner up to do the behaviors you want them to do and then reinforce them. Here we're out on a walk and wish the dog ahead picks something up. I cue her to drop it, but I'm not gonna give her a treat right now because we've done lots of training sessions for drop and leave it. Instead, I investigate what it is and I make a plan that on the way back, I can work on a leave it game, walking past whatever it is. And it happens to be a fishbone. Here I'm putting treats into a plastic vegetable container to use as a distraction to teach the concept of a default leave it from food in the environment. First, you can warm your dog up with the attention game or recall games before the distractions are present and then while the distractions are present. Leave it. Awesome. When your dog's warmed up, you can then practice your leave it cue. Yeah. The goal is to get to the point where you don't have to say leave it anymore and the environment, the situation, is cueing your dog to leave yeah. it. 
So you can practice lots of different scenarios of leaving the treats on the floor in the containers, out of the containers. You can practice calling your dog past the treats, walking at your side past the treats, and asking for different behaviors and tricks near the treats. If you've not yet trained the Leave It cue using positive reinforcement, I suggest watching the video I've linked in the description below on how to train this as it goes into detail of each step and what to do if things go wrong. Good girl. Down. Good. Good girl. I like to work on the leash pressure game first with new puppies and adult dogs as the first game to teaching the leave it when out and about because what it does is it teaches your dog what to do if they were to pull towards something that they were interested in and we're basically teaching the dogs that the cue of feeling the pressure on leash simply means orient back to the handler. I suggest watching the full tutorial on how to train this. Here's some footage of me working on a leave it game when out and about with my puppy Halo. I've set up little blocks of cheese on this windowsill and at first I'm giving him a verbal cue to leave the cheese and then next I'm marking and reinforcing him for doing a default leave it past the cheese. Now a lot of people have written to me specifically asking for a tutorial on how to teach their dog to leave rabbit poop for competitions. So I really suggest that you use a poop bag and pick up some poop, put it into a plastic container to use as a distraction first because it is so small and hard to see that your dog can quickly pick up a piece and eat it without you intending. Also, by using the container that you worked on the leave it exercises with, with the smell of the rabbit poop in to begin with, it will set your dog up for success to understand the concept that rabbit poop is not on the menu. If your dog has a history of foraging for rabbit poop at a specific location or during a specific time, say for example when you let your dog out in your backyard alone, understand that those scenarios will be the cue for your dog to eat rabbit poop. So what you need to do is make sure during your training process that you use management and prevention in between training sessions. Leave it. Good girl. Down. Leave it. Here you can see I sprinkled the rabbit poop back into the grass and now I'm asking her for behaviors including a down which is one of the hardest behaviors because their face is right near the poop. As you can see that this exercise is very similar to the one I did in my living room using dog treats so if you work on the dog treat exercise a lot to where it's easy for your dog to leave dog treats this exercise is going to be much easier for your dog. Down. Good. Let's go. I'm Emily Larlam, aka Kiko Pup, on YouTube, and this video is on the topic of teaching your dog to walk on a loose leash towards something he's very excited to get to. So perhaps it is a dog park that he's anticipating playing with other dogs. Uh, perhaps it's getting to your house after getting out of the car, or getting to the car out of exiting your house or um, pulling across a road to smell something. So basically dogs move at a faster pace than we do and when they know where they want to go they want to get there fast. So uh, for us it would be the same as being told to walk this slow when we wanted to get somewhere. Uh, it's very stressful and frustrating but by using positive reinforcement, we can reinforce our dogs for going at the speed that we want them to. And by making what they want to do contingent on walking on a loose leash, we can reinforce the loose leash walking with something they really want. However, if we were just to try and get the dog to walk, stay there, Epic. If we were just going to try and get the dog to walk on a loose leash, um, for the thing that they're very excited about, it's going to be very stressful and frustrating. And if a dog is very aroused, they're not going to learn as well as when they're calm. So we can break the steps up into small steps that are easy and less frustrating for the dog. 
Some things to work on first to make it easier for your dog to do this type of training is working on a calm settle and a settle on a mat. And I'll link a video in the description below. So another thing you can do is get the dog used to wearing the harness and the leash inside the house so these don't predict being very excited. So you can just put the harness on and then drop some treats and feed your dog for settling on a leash. Um, or say, for example, if you have a backyard, you could put the harness on your dog while in the backyard so they don't get all disappointed that they're not going for a walk. Or you can just put the harness and leash on, begin a training session, and then just take the leash off. And then when your dog settles, you can start to reinforce them with food and also work on clipping the leash on when your dog is settled as you feed a treat. So this doesn't mean to get super excited because if your dog is just getting super excited by the leash and harness, it's really not gonna help um, in the situation where you want your dog to be calm and not pull. It's just gonna add to the excitement. So anything that comes before or, or predicts that the dog is gonna have an exciting time and there's a distance between you and where they wanna to get to, such as uh, going out the door or getting out of a car or being in a car, you can work on calmness in those situations. So for example, right now we can work on just relaxing in front of the the door that we go out to the exciting place that she likes to go. So for my dogs, I've been letting them run from my one door down to the, uh, I can't say it because they'll get very excited, uh, where we do um, training together. Uh, so when I try to walk them down on a leash, they get very excited and they pull. <laughs> and it's extremely embarrassing if I have like a client down there and then my dogs are pulling towards them. It looks like they're completely untrained. So we're going to work on it. And I thought I would show you the training process. Um, so one thing is working on just being calm before we even start. Uh, so if you, your dog was excited in the car, it's extremely boring training, but you simply need to work on settle in the car. So you can go to the car with a bag of really delicious treats and just work on the dog getting in and out of the crate for treats and then laying in there for a couple of, you know, a minute or two and then getting out. And then when your dog is comfortable with the concept of being trained in the car and that they're not going on a journey, you can start to work on a settle where you're just hanging out. Um, but sometimes if you just go straight to the settle, the dog can get a little bit stressed because they think they're going on a car journey and they won't settle. So you can't reinforce them for just relaxing because they don't relax, they just get more stressed. So if that ever happens, I would discontinue it or see if the dog can take treats or take a break, get out of the car, get back in and just practice getting in and out of the car. That can help change the picture for the dog to know they're not going to the exciting place and that they can relax a little bit. The other idea is to go places with your dog in your car, set, have the dog settle in the car with the door open, and then just work on settle in front of the car or asking your dog to sniff around in a calm manner after getting out rather than it be about playing. Are you interested in training? I should have trained you first before making this video. Okay. So now we're gonna work on settling in front of the door. The other dog that has this issue is this guy. Oh, the other tip is that uh, it's a great idea to, when you first begin this training, is to give the dog some mental and physical stimulation before you do this type of training, which I haven't done with her. So these guys have gone for a walk and poor little Epic here has, hasn't had any training or, or walking yet. So you can see the difference in their behavior. Um, and it's not about a tired dog is a good dog. It's not about tiring the dog out. It's about reducing um, their excitement about getting to play at this particular moment. Then when you're having success with this training, you're going to start doing this stuff before the dog goes for a walk or, or does some uh, physical activity. Okay, so now we're gonna practice in front of the door. So this is Wish's settle mat, and I'm gonna put it here just so that it makes a different picture than when we usually go out of the D-O-O-R. <laughs> so here it is over here, and then I'm going to walk her over calmly. Wishy, good, good. And I'm using a high rate of reinforcement like this by just dropping treats so that it's a different picture than when we just go out there to do something fun. Oh, so then I can sigh and I can sit down with her <laughs> and here comes Epic. <laughs> 
and see if she might think to relax. And if not, I can help her by giving her a little hint. So you can just chill and hang out, maybe read a book or look at your phone next to the door or in your car with the doors open on a nice cool morning or out, just outside of your car if, that's, if your dog is comfortable and taking treats out there. But if you're in your home and there are no distractions, um, you can work on some calm handling here because obviously uh, if you have the treats right near your dog, they might not think to stop uh, thinking about the food. So you could just work on calm handling and treats for just laying calmly, even though their focus is um, on the treats like this. If your dog isn't taking treats near the door, you can first work on the settle in your living room or just hang out with your dog. Maybe take them out for a toilet break first before then working on this exercise. Now she's doing so good, I'm going to crack the door a little bit. Good, and I'm going to feed her a treat as I open the door like that. So usually the door opening makes them very excited. So I can just practice the door being open while she's settling. And then I can close it again and just practice touching the knob. So the knob doesn't mean get excited. This is actually part of Karen Overall's relaxation protocol is getting the dog desensitizing and counter conditioning the dog to uh, things that make them excited or could make them excited. Uh, so the doorknob, the door opening, and you're just working on these don't mean anything exciting. Now the door is open and we can work on settling on the mat again. And then when your dog is really good at that, you can release your dog, let's go, and move away from the mat into your house and then move back to the mat and lay down again. Good job. And if your dog is really good at that, you can start to go out the door. Let's go. Good. And then come back to the mat. Good job. And you're highly reinforcing your dog for going back to the mat. And as you step, let's go, you feed multiple treats every little mini step you take and then return to the mat because most likely your dog will want to <laughs> run out the door, or run out the car. Uh, to go where they want to go. Now, if your dog isn't taking treats, you can simply get out of the car or get out of the door and then come back in, close the door and let your dog calm down a little bit. It's a great idea to brush up on your leash walking skills inside the house and in your yard so your dog has been highly reinforced for walking with you when there hasn't been any sort of conflict. So I suggest doing that first before working on the super exciting thing of pulling towards where they wanna to get to go. So I actually have a six week course on loose leash walking that's on my website and I'll link that in the description below. But I do have a lot of videos on YouTube that are free. So one of them, one of the games you can play is marking and reinforcing for the dog, understanding to stay at your side like this and take a step forward when you take a step forward and being highly reinforced for this position at your side. And then the other game that you can play is the let's go game where you take a step and turn in the other direction and mark for your dog choosing to move with you. So if you turn around, your dog turns with you and I'll link a video in the description below on how to train that and working on the leash pressure game. So if your dog is excited to get somewhere and they pull on leash, you're teaching them before they do it that when they feel the pressure on a leash, it simply means move back to you. Good boy! Good boy! The other really awesome game to play with your dog is approaching distractions that are very exciting, uh, but beginning with something that's not too exciting. So you put some treats down on the floor like this. I don't know if you can see it, them in in the shot, but there's some treats down there. And then what I'm gonna do is first mark and reinforce the dog for staying at my side and then taking a mini step forward like this. And then when we get to the treats, I'm gonna release her and say, okay, get it in a calm way. If you say, okay, get it, um, that can excite the dog quite a lot. So the calmer your release, uh, the better. The next step is seeing if you can take a couple steps forwards and stop before reaching the treats. And then the final step, 
this way is seeing if you can walk all the way to the treats, stopping on the way over, and then only getting the treats when you say, okay, go get them. And then what you can do with this is use it for any situation where the dog is focused on getting somewhere, such as uh, crossing the road. You can practice putting the treats in a bowl across the road or putting the treats somewhere outside and putting a toy. If the dog likes their toy, can you walk on a loose leash to the toy? And that means play. I also have a video on how to teach your dog to be calmer around toys. If you are going somewhere like a park to play with a ball or, or a frisbee with your dog. Um, so uh, I'll link the video on how to teach your dog to be calm around frisbees and toys. But basically it's this game where the dog doesn't know you have it and they're really calm and then you present it and then you play with them. Ready? Catch? Good. Yeah. Twirl. Get it. Drop, spin, get it. Good. Woohoo. Drop. And so now I've got her used to playing with me with the frisbee here. And then I can have the door open. And I actually have this gate here so that uh, I can have my door open and do stuff without worrying about the dogs leaving my house, which is a great idea. You can also have the gate on the outside of the door for safety. And then play with my dog with the door open. Oh, hello. <laughs> Get it. Drop. It's Halo's turn. Ready? Get it. Good job. And then the next step, if you wanted to work on teaching your dog uh, to be excited about being with you, when you leave a car and you have to walk a long distance to a field that's safe to play with them, is you can have your dog on leash, get out of the car, and then play little cat drop little catch games like this in front of the car. Drop. So at first the dog might not want to play with the toy near you or near the door because they are desperate to get to the area that they anticipate the play. So um, sometimes when you bring the toy out, they won't even notice it. But what you can do is have the door open a crack where someone's guarding it, or you know you have a safety method like this, or your dog's on a leash, and you simply wait till they calm down and they want to play with you uh, before you get out the door. And that way, if you have a toy, you have something reinforcing that the dog is anticipating with you rather than it always being at the di in, a dist in the distance. And the same with building your treats to be reinforcing. So this idea of calming the dog down so they're able to work for food is going to mean that everything they want isn't always far away that they're stressed about getting to and that you actually control it. And by reducing their excitement about getting to different places, that's highly going to help with the pulling towards the places drop. Because even if you work and you proof walking on a loose leash, if the dog is just too excited, that can all just get thrown out the window. Wishy! Boop! Now we're right outside the front door and I'm going to encourage Wish to play with the frisbee with me near the door rather than in the field so she doesn't have that anticipation of getting all the way down there to have the fun. Wait. Good job. Sit. Wave. Good. Good. Bring. Now I'm going to take a couple of steps towards the destination and when she's walking nicely on a loose leash, I'm going to turn around and play with her near the front door. So if you're by your car, you could play with your dog by your car, take a few steps towards the field or the area they're going to play, the dog park. Let's go. Good job. Boom. If your dog pulls ahead, you can simply Use the leash pressure game, wait, and make a connection with your dog, and then move forwards. If your dog hits the end of the leash like that, and then you go back, and then you go forward again, uh, the dog most likely is not going to calm down. So you can just walk. If they hit the end of the leash, take some time to get your dog to stay at your side and connect with you before then moving forward again. Good. Get it. Good job. Mm. Drop. Shh. 
If your dog pulls ahead like that, you can walk back to the car or the house and see if your dog can connect with you again. And then you can take just a step forward. Good. And then reinforce. I wouldn't worry so much about the dog being perfectly next to you drop. You can clean that up later, but simply focus on you want the length of the leash, how you're going to have it, and that the dog's walking on a loose leash. So they're conscious of when they feel the pressure on the leash that they come back to you. So if I wanted to walk my dog on a longer leash, as long as they're staying uh, without leash pressure, then that's awesome. They don't have to be right at your side as long as they're conscious about the leash pressure. If you wanted your dog closer to you when they're excited like this, it's gonna be harder. So I suggest just having a short leash so they feel the pressure on the leash when they get too far ahead like that. Good, boom. Awesome. It's a little tricky playing with a dog and a leash. It's much easier to work on this exercise with uh, treats. But um, one thing you can do is hold the leash in the opposite hand that the dog's on and the reinforcement, the treat or the toy in the hand that the dog is going to be next to your side so that when the reinforcement comes, it comes from behind the dog. It uh, appears and is anticipated from behind rather than the picture of what they want is in front of them and they pull toward. So that's really going to help. Also, the frisbee and the food is not in the picture of what the dog can see. So it's easier to fade it to where the dog is just anticipating going where they want to go. Good. Woohoo! The important step to get to the point where you don't need a frisbee or treats is reinforcing your dog for walking to where they want to go without looking at you. Because that moment that they look where they want to go, most dogs usually start to speed up. So once you're doing really well and you can take quite a few steps towards where you want to go, you're going to start marking when the dog looks at what they want to get to and they're not speeding up. So they're walking at the pace that you want, either a walk or a trot, depending on how fast you walk. Wishy swing. Good. And there I marked uh, her looking back at me. So I'm going to make sure to mark her drop for looking at where we're going. Drop. Ready? So you might just walk a few more steps. Good. Get it. Woohoo. Drop. So now I'm just going to put this down here. Leave it. Good. Get it. Woo. Woohoo! You did it! Boom. You can also practice this off leash. Come on, Wish. Wishy swing. Good. Get it. Good girl. If you're using treats, you can simply mark and reinforce your dog for staying at your side when you've left the car or you've left your front door and you're just going to mark and reinforce your dog standing at your side and then taking a step forward. Good. And then marking and reinforcing for the dog waiting there. And then you can increase the duration of how long your dog stands. And then you can increase how far you walk like that. So then you can practice let's go and go back to where you came from, mark and reinforce, and you can ask your dog to settle on a mat if you wish. And then when your dog is doing really good, you can take more steps and mark and reinforce for your dog's face, facing in the direction and looking at where they want to go. Let's go. Good. Good. Let's go. Good girl. Whoops. If the dog goes out ahead of you, you can lure them back and also make sure that when you take a step forward like this, that your hand can come in front of them like that and prevent them from uh, spinning in front of you and just facing you like that. So that's why it's a great idea to hold the treats behind you when doing this training because the treats come from behind and the dog is anticipating reinforcement from behind like that. Good. 
awesome. girl. If you have more than one dog, I suggest working on each dog one at a time while the other dog is put away maybe in a room with music and a chew toy where they can't hear what's going on in case they get excited about what you're doing. Um, or maybe you go on an outing with just one dog to the park. Uh, or someone else can walk one of the other dogs or the other dogs while you're working on this training. And then when each dog is doing wonderfully, you can go right back to the start as if you never trained them before to set them up for success that when they're with each other things get even calmer so here we are with wish and halo who are the ones that like to run uh, like the wind down there for training because they love to play fast uh, games for toys down there and so here they are settling for food and then when i begin walking with both i'm gonna say let's go and then just feed them here so um, I'm not even going to think about having them at my side. I might just feed them in front of me like this for following me because they have a huge habit of being very excited about racing down there. Good. Wishy. Good. Good. Today I want to show you a technique that I created for training loose leash walking when out on a walk and using food. This little tutorial comes from my presentation that I'm going to be presenting at the Pet Professional Guild's Force Free Summit that is coming up this November, November 11th through 13th. And there's still spaces, so if you want a ticket, you have to go to their website, the Pet Professional Guild's website, and sign up there. It's going to be in Tampa, Florida. So um, I'm really excited to be doing this because leash walking is one of my favorite things. And this specific technique I just had to share with everyone to give you a little tidbit, a little taster of what's to come. But the inspiration for this technique is Lacey. You know, we tried everything to train Lacey to walk on a loose leash, but every time you give her a treat on a walk, she's walking nicely, you give her a treat, suddenly after eating the treat, she'd run and hit the end of the leash which is very frustrating because she was doing so well until you give her the treat. And that happens with a lot of client dogs. So I came up with this way of stopping that from happening. And basically what we're teaching the dog is after eating the treat, the dog has to then wait for permission to move forwards. So I will show you how to do that right now. You want to train this exercise in a non-distracting environment at first. So after a couple training sessions where you've really built the behavior, then you can attempt to try it on a walk when your dog's been highly reinforced for doing it. So what you're going to do is you're going to give your dog a treat and then just after they're done eating it, you're going to ask your dog for eye contact using an attention noise or their name that you've previously trained. If you haven't trained an attention noise, there will be a link to a video tutorial down here that you can follow. So, once you've asked for your dog's attention and they look at you, you're going to click and then reinforce. So by repeating this over and over again, what you're teaching your dog is that after eating a treat, they can predict that they're going to have to look at you afterwards to get more food. Instead of what usually happens on a walk where they're walking perfectly, you feed them, they know they're not going to get a treat for a very long time, so they rush ahead. The end result is that you're going to feed your dog a treat, they're going to look at you expectantly, and the reward is going to be access to the environment. So they've eaten their treat, they wait, they look at you, and then you move forward saying, let's go, and the reward is to keep walking. Okay, so here goes. First I'm going to feed her a treat, and then make the kissy noise, and then reinforce her for looking at me. So I'm going to feed her a treat, and I'm putting it on the floor because she's already offering lots of attention. Good job. After practicing this exercise multiple times, you can see if your dog might offer you the behavior of giving you eye contact after eating the treat. 
So I'm just going to warm her up by repeating it one more time. We're going to feed a treat. Good job. Good job. Awesome. Yes. Yes. Now you can add in some steps. So you're going to walk along, click your dog, feed, and see if your dog will offer you eye contact. If your dog doesn't, immediately make the kissing noise, give them a hint, and click and reinforce your dog. If for some reason your dog's not responding to their attention noise, you simply need to go back and really work on it and reinforce it so it's a strong behavior. Good job! So the final step is you're walking along on a walk, you have your food and your dog's being awesome, you can say yes and reinforce them, but walking nicely at your side, and then you're going to wait, wait for eye contact, and then give them the cue, let's go, and continue walking. When working on this exercise inside, it's okay if you can't get your dog to stop looking at you. So you're going to just feed a treat or put a treat on the ground, and then click and reinforce your dog for looking at you after they eat the treat. But when you're on a walk, I wouldn't suggest feeding your dog for looking at you while you're walking, because what that can teach them is that they only walk on a loose leash while they're watching you, and then when they're not watching you, they, they forge ahead. So the moments that you want to initially mark when you're walking is when the dog is walking at your side, but not staring at you or paying attention to you. They're just walking calmly at your side, enjoying their life, looking around. That's when you're going to mark, feed, and then after that, you're going to wait for eye contact before giving the dog permission to continue walking with a cue like, let's go, or whatever cue you want to use. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I look forward to seeing everyone at the PPG Summit in Florida. Walks should not only be about exercise but about mental stimulation as well. During a walk you can give your dog permission to go sniff so that they can explore an area while you follow behind keeping the leash loose. When you are ready to move on simply say let's go and move on. If your dog doesn't come when you say let's go just use gentle, even pressure on the leash and keep moving. Do not jerk your dog. Let's go. Good girl. Another thing you don't want to do is let them continue sniffing after you say let's go. Otherwise, let's go means nothing to them. For dogs that are markers, you can teach them to walk by your side and then give them breaks to mark in appropriate areas. When the dog is walking on a loose leash at your side, if they try to mark on something, quickly move away saying, let's go, before they get a chance. Then when you're in an appropriate area, give the cue, go sniff, so they can sniff around and mark. Or if you prefer, you can teach your dog to pee on cue. Good girl, okay, let's go. By teaching your dog that you can reinforce them with access to the environment, you can get your dog to listen to you out of the house even when you have no toys or treats. This video is on the topic of loose leash walking tips for when your dog starts to pull on leash after you've already trained your dog to walk on a loose leash and suddenly the pulling comes back. So there's two parts to this. One is uh, going back and reinforcing loose leash walking with proofing games so that you're getting that behavior back that's getting lost and also assessing why the dog might be pulling. Um, so if the issue was uh, fear-based or arousal-based, going back and working on loose leash walking is not going to be as helpful as figuring out what's making your dog excited and what's making your dog fearful when out and about. Say for example you go out the door and suddenly your dog's pulling, maybe it was the 4th of July. The day before, the dog heard a noise and now the dog is sensitized. In that sort of circumstance, I would suggest not going for a long walk where your dog is going to pull you around the block 
um, and be hypervigilant. So if you notice that your dog is acting worried, their tail is low between their legs, they're shivering, they're looking around, um, I would just go home. If they need to go to the bathroom, I would take, if you have a small dog, you can even carry the dog to the area where hopefully they'll go to the bathroom. And then I would just go inside and, and play games like uh, finding treats around the house and uh, mental stimulation games. And just get the dog into a calmer state of mind if something has stressed the dog. You could also put on noisemakers inside the house, uh, such as um, a fan or a, um, an, a white noise machine or, or calm music so that the dog can start to relax. And just by giving the dog a little vacation from the walk, um, that can really help. And consider if the, if the scary incident happened, say for example, your dog was on a walk and got scared by something, one of the neighbor's houses, something happened there, and the dog is scared of the part in front of your house, go in the car, go somewhere else for a little bit uh, and walk somewhere else. You can try that and see if that works. If your dog is more scared walking there, you might consider the break um, or trying another location or, um, or if the dog is the best in front of your house, go back to that. But I would walk back and forth in front of your house investigating the grass. You can point out things that your dog might find interesting so they can uh, stop thinking about being hypervigilant and you can go and point at the grass uh, so they get more interested in, in ex exploring the environment uh, slowly rather than, ooh, gotta escape. Um, and by walking back and forth, you won't get so far away that if you wanna go home, you're not gonna get there because they're gonna wanna pull, pull back home. Okay, so that's one scenario. Another scenario is that your dog is excited to be outside. Maybe your dog is um, just realizing that he, uh, like my uh, boy Bliss, that he's interested in female dogs. Actually, my other, <laughs> I, have, I raised two puppies at the same time. My little dog Cloud is also interested in female dogs, but he's, He's Mr. Chill. He's Mr. Easy Puppy that makes me look good. So he walks on a loose leash <laughs> with no problem. And it's just genetics. It's just genetics. But Bliss is like, oh boy, females, let me, let me at him. So in those scenarios, it's not really about the leash walking uh, that you need to focus on. You're focusing on the issue of arousal or excitement and the concept of impulse control. So, um, if your dog is just excited to be outside, you just bring a saddle mat uh, to the park and just sit or on a picnic blanket and just sit with your dog on a leash and reinforce your dog for settling or just being with you. Then what you can do is take little mini walks away from the mat and return to the mat and then settle again. So you're not going in a long circuit where your dog is going to pull or predict where he's going because as soon as they predict where they're headed, they see a tree in the distance, you're going ahead, they smell something, they're gonna keep pulling to the tree. But if you're doing these weaving pathways and then returning to the mat, they're going to be less likely to pull, especially if they've passed the areas. So the, the function of doing this exercise is to break the steps up smaller. It's gonna be easier for the dog to do small, uh, small journeys where, he, where it's unpredictable and easier because they'll have smelled that area already so they won't be as excited about it. Uh, you can also choose the right location that's gonna be uh, easier for your dog. If you really have an excitable dog, um, you might go somewhere that has less people and dogs if your dog's really social. Or if your dog is uh, hypervigilant when there's just like one person coming over the horizon, you might go to a busier park where there's like a milling crowd and they're just seeing people and dogs in the distance moving around rather than all quiet in a field and boom, there's a loose dog at the end of the field and they're like hypervigilant or wanting to pull towards that dog. So choosing the right environment for learning is really gonna be the key to success with leash walking rather than going out with a bag of food and stuffing your dog full of treats, hoping that this stressed out dog or over aroused dog will start walking on a loose leash because he's eating at the same time. That's not the, bo that's not the most um, efficient and reliable way to train. It's really being careful about choosing the right environments and breaking the steps up small enough. 
The next tip is that instead of working on the pulling issues where you're having the pulling issues, it's a great idea to go back and retrain, reinforce, and proof the lo loose leash walking behaviors where your dog is going to be successful and you can make it highly reinforcing again. Because if you're in those situations where your dog is pulling, it's going to be harder for your dog to pay attention and also their body is not going to find the reinforcement as reinforcing because of the distractors in the environment. So a lot of people wonder why I'm always training in my inside my house or my yard, it's because that's where you condition strong behaviors. So when you do go out, uh, you have these strong, powerful behaviors. But if you do all your training for loose leash walking outside, you're competing with the environment all the time and your reinforcers might not be as uh, powerful in those environments. So I really harness the power of reinforcements with no distractions to build those strong behaviors, make the dog enjoy, not make the dog, but get that dog enjoying walking with you, being with you, connecting with you, having a relationship with you, and then bring that to the street. So um, I'm gonna co uh, connect. I'm gonna put some uh, tutorials in the description, exercises to work on. Um, you're going to refresh those exercises. And I suggest if you suddenly have a regression to pulling, especially around adolescence, um, because when you taught your puppy loose leash walking, <clears throat> it was like they were a baby, like you learning uh, some words in a different language when you're two or three, um, and then suddenly someone asking you when you're 16 if you remember the lessons, you're going to be like, uh, no. So that's the same with adolescent dogs. For us, it was just a few months ago. For them, it was when they were a baby, and now they're a teenager. They don't remember any of that. That's why they're pulling on leash again. So, or most likely, uh, that can be one of the issues. Um, that's just an opinion, not based on science, but uh, to me, it makes a lot of sense that uh, they're not going to remember those lessons, especially when they're in a different body, having different emotions. Uh, it's a whole other situation uh, and their desires are completely different at that point in time. So you need to work on it again and need to work on different distractions. So I'll link the videos in the description below and I suggest if you have this regression around adolescence, I would suggest doing at least 12 one to two minute training sessions before you expect to see amazing results. So that's just two weeks where you sit in your living room and you do a tiny bit of training, one to two minutes, not a big deal, and really uh, make an, an effort to put in those um, training, training minutes. Um, and that is going to build strong behavior. Training with no distraction and then proofing with distractions that are that, that the dog is going to be able to move away from within like two to three uh, repetitions. If your dog is um, struggling and you keep, uh, and goes more than three repetitions where they're having a hard time, lower criteria. So um, the, the, the way that brain, the brain works and reinforcement and conditioning uh, is, is very similar to how muscles are built. So the concept of like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out and train my dog not to pull on a leash in one day, and then you're out there drilling your dog and, and your dog's walking on a loose leash, that's not gonna make long-term results. That's like doing 100 push-ups in one day. Uh, that's not gonna build muscle. Uh, and the same with neural connections in the brain. By repeating and reinforcing, that's what builds connections and memory and the desire to want to, to walk with you is repetition. And it doesn't have to be a lot of time. I'm suggesting uh, just one to two minutes walking on a loose leash, 12 times. Maybe you do six times one week and then you go a week and then you do it six times again and there you go. You'll see amazing results because usually what happens is people do one or two lessons, they go walk their dog, the dog pulls, and then they lose faith, they give up, and the same with uh, exercise. You really have to create a plan, write it down, and stick to it, and see if you're gonna get those results after. Um, you know, expect to see results only after the, the 12 sessions, rather than think, ah, oh, I've done three sessions, the dog is not learning, I give up. Let me just let him pull or uh, I'll just yell at him. <laughs> so I hope these tips helped you with your training. 
don't give up. It's a hard behavior for most dogs to learn. There's some easy dogs like my little Cloud and my little Epic that naturally just want to walk with me and don't get excited by stuff. But for dogs that are social, be glad that they're social. That's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And for dogs that are fearful, teaching them these games to connect with you is going to help with the fear issues too. They're going to trust you. You're going to be able to give them information. And it's just a really, really great idea to focus on this right now if you're having the issues. This is a game changer tip for all of you who are trying to train a medium to large sized dog to walk on a loose leash at your side. Oftentimes we get hung up with reinforcing where the dog should be and not thinking about the dog's gait. So if you have a puppy that's going to be a medium or large sized dog and they're gonna at least double in size, what's gonna happen is their legs are gonna be double as long unless you have a very short dog, like I have a little um, Shih Tzu mix who his legs, like they grew, <laughs> they were this short and then they grew this big. So his, uh, the amount of ground he covered when walking at a specific gait, it didn't change much. But if your dog's legs are gonna be like a puppy and then an adult, they're gonna travel twice as fast because they're gonna, uh, they're gonna cover more ground. So if you're reinforcing your dog for staying at your side, yes, they're learning to stay at your side, but most puppies will comfortably trot at your side when we're walking a normal pace that a human might walk. If you're walking extremely slow, your puppy is probably going to be also walking with you. Now, um, if you continually reinforce your puppy for trotting at your side, and you notice that around the house, the puppy trots to different locations, the puppy's never practicing or rehearsing walking. Uh, some breeds don't particularly like to walk. For example, sight hounds and whippets, they might be trotting to every destination that they're gonna go to and not specifically walking. So when, they, when their legs double in size and then suddenly you, for the dog, have become started to walk twice as slow for them, they're gonna get very confused and frustrated that they're not, um, they're suddenly having to walk twice as slow. So for us, it seems like they are walking twice as fast and wanting to pull, but in truth, we are the ones that are slowing them down because they don't know that they've doubled in size. So um, that's a really important tip. So if you have a young puppy, what you have to do is practice walking extremely slow and it can be extremely boring because puppies wanna walk fast, we wanna walk fast. And so us walking slow is actually great practice for us to understand what it's like when the little puppy is an adolescent and they're having that joy of exploration of the environment that they have to walk half as slow as they want to. So us practicing, uh, when you have a little puppy, you're gonna be reinforcing them for going at a slow walking pace as well as a trot. So another thing to keep in mind is you might wanna film yourself walking with your puppy or adult dog and see that you're reinforcing the puppy for staying at the same gate. So they're gonna be walking and not walking and trotting, walking and trotting, walking and trotting. And when they're trotting, they're trotting. So you can practice walking when your dog's walking, super slow, and then walking faster where your dog's trotting. And if you have an adult dog, you can practice this too. So what I suggest, if your dog is walking at your side and you're in a busy environment that you're going to have your dog just walking at your side if you, if you have a large dog because if they were to trot they're going to hit the end of the leash in like a second so um, this is really going to help with those dogs that um, they understand the concept of walking at your side but they see something they want to sniff and what they're going to do is go as fast as they can to that area but if you've taught them to just walk everywhere and you can even proof it in training games where you set up um, something that you're going to reach. Maybe it's the other end of the road or a bush or a bowl of treats and you practice walking there with your dog at your side um, and they walk at a, at a walk and don't trot. And then you release them to what it, whatever it is. You can practice uh, this technique. And then when your dog wants to get somewhere, they're going to walk to that distraction rather than suddenly run, <laughs> which, is, uh, which can end with them hitting the end of the leash because they're not thinking about how close they are to you. So that's a really 
wonderful tip and it makes it so easy, uh, especially for service dogs. So my boy Bliss, ever since he was a little puppy, I didn't even, I, I rarely walked at a trot with him. I did lots of training and off leash where he's trotting around. But when I walked him on a leash, I walked half as slow as I wanted to. And by the time he was six months old, he was walking perfectly at my side, just walking and not ever thinking to go into a trot. Um, because if he did go into a trot, I would be jogging. So we do practice that and it has a different name uh, specifically for jogging. Um, so that's the tip. If you have a small breed dog, like a Chihuahua or a dog like that, um, it really is super easy to teach them to walk on a loose leash in comparison because they're not going to change sizes. Um, a, a good thing to keep in mind is that they are going at a beautiful, uh, nice trot uh, or, or walking where you walk super slow so they can sniff around. Um, but make sure that you're going a nice speed for them so you can film your dog and see if they're going at a nice gait or, and also with large breed dogs, if you walk quite fast and, your dog, and you have a husky and they're trotting, make sure that you're going the correct speed because what can happen is sometimes the dog can start walking like a camel. Usually a dog will move their, their left front foot and their back right foot forward as they trot. And when they're walking like a camel, they'll walk with the left foot and the left back foot. So keep in mind that the dog isn't doing that. And it's great to, if the dog is doing that, just get the dog checked out by a vet to make sure that it isn't, there isn't something going on with their hips or something else going on in their body. If you keep trying to change speeds and, and the dog is not having success with uh, trotting normally. Most of you might already have an adult medium to large size dog that's having a pulling issue and what I suggest is to practice slow walking in your house where you walk really slow, mark and reinforce, practice in your yard, go out to the street and practice walking slow, reinforcing your dog at your side and then release them to sniff things that are within reach. So you can say okay go sniff and then they can sniff bushes and and pee on them and then if the dog does go to pull keep the leash short enough that the dog's step into the trot uh, ends with the leash pressure so that the leash is short enough that the dog can't just take off running and then hit the end of the leash that's not only going to be more comfortable when the dog hits the end of the leash uh, but it's going to teach the dog that as soon as they start getting fast uh, they can't get where they want and you can work on leash pressure as a cue and I'll link a video in the description below on how to teach your dog that when they feel the leash pressure it's simply a cue to turn back to you and find the area where the leash is loose. That's going to be extremely helpful along with this tip of teaching the dog uh, what speed to go when walking with you that uh, when they do hit the end of the leash they know oh I'm supposed to uh, back up or reorient to the handler. Um, so the, what usually happens is people will have a five foot long leash, the dog's walking at the side, and then you see them go start to speed up slowly and get out in front of their owner, hit the end of the leash, come back, speed up slowly. And what the owner's looking at is the loose leash. And so they're not thinking about the fact that the dog is speeding up. So instead of letting the dog rehearse, speeding up for a few seconds and then hitting the end of the leash and then having to come back, that moment that you see them speed up uh, you don't even have to shorten the leash. You can get make a kissy noise or simply stop. So the dog has to stop uh, at your side. But by keeping the leash short when practicing this, if the dog ignores you and they keep going, they're not going to hit the end of the leash out in front of you. They're going to hit it right at, at your side. And some dogs, once they've had this training, you don't even have to. Uh, they just feel a slight uh, pressure that they're that they're that they're at the end of the leash and they come back. And of course you can do what I previously mentioned as well, which is set up training games where you put out a distraction and you practice walking towards it with your dog at a walk instead of a trot if you have a large breed dog. Good. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support my work, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. You can also become a supporting member of channel Kiko Pup by clicking the join button.
This video is on the topic of taking your puppy or adult dog out somewhere new and setting your dog up for success if they typically can be a little bit worried or overexcited when they go somewhere new. Now, Epic here, my little puppy, is actually really good in lots of different environments, but I haven't always had puppies like her, and so I usually set dogs up for success in this way when going new places. Now, previously, before I took her here, I have worked very religiously on reinforcing her for settling inside of her crate like this as well as if you had a larger dog you can teach them to relax on a mat like she's doing here and so when you go to a new environment you can bring your crate if you have a little dog or a mat if you have a bigger dog and if you have a bigger dog you can also simply park somewhere new open the back door and have your dog in a crate and just sprinkle some treats in there and reinforce your dog for settling in the crate in a new environment while they're still inside the car. Now, if you don't work on the settle in the crate uh, at home, say when your car is parked or when you have the crate inside your house and your yard in non-distracting environments first, then it can be quite stressful for the dog and they might not think to settle. So the really important part of the homework here is reinforcing settling behaviors at home first so you can bring that calmness to other environments. The same with if you wanted to teach your dog to sit, you would work on that in your house, maybe your kitchen, your living room, and then when the dog's really good at it, then you could start asking for it out and about. But if you try to teach sit when your dog's stressed or excited and not taking treats out and about, they're not going to learn how to sit. So. Um, that's the beauty of working on these behaviors at home. You can then bring the mat and it's gonna help your dog think to relax in a new place. Um, conversely, most people, when they get somewhere new, they're excited about checking out the environment. So they'll set off walking and what can happen is that the dog will pull straight ahead or there's just too much stimulation going on for the dog. Where if you just relax for a little bit and let the dog just sit and look around at the environment, it can be very helpful to decreasing how excited or worried they are about where they are. When your dog first settles in a new environment, it's natural for the dog to be looking at you for the reinforcement if you've just given them a treat like this. So the dog is going to be staring up at you to begin with. Um, once your dog becomes a pro, you don't have to reinforce this and you can wait till your dog is casually relaxing and enjoying the environment. But at first, to give your dog a head start, if they think to go to their mat and they lay down, you can reinforce that and make it easier for the dog by giving them a couple of treats for simply going and laying on their mat. Then, as you progress and your dog is feeling comfortable, you can reinforce your dog for noticing things in the environment and not just thinking about the food. So if you constantly feed your dog for just staring at the treats, if you don't have any treats, the dog might not think to lay down when you're out and about. So what you're gonna do is wait for those moments that the dog is looking around at something in the environment, and that's when you can use a calm marker or simply just put a treat calmly between your dog's feet like that. Basically, I'm waiting for her to be distracted by the environment and look around, and then that's the moment that I'm gonna mark and reinforce. And it's a little chilly here today in San Diego, so she's shivering a little bit. And uh, previously, when we've done this exercise in the sun, she's much more comfortable. So with her, I wouldn't necessarily be out and about sitting when it's kind of cold. I would choose a time where it's sunny and warm for her to relax on her mat. And if, uh, if I wanted to do this exercise, I could have her in a sweater. So now she's noticed another dog walking by and I'm gonna reinforce her for simply watching the dog pass calmly. Good, good job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Good. Good. And now a skateboarder's going by. Good. 
If your dog's not taking treats, you can sprinkle the treats in the crate or on the mat and limit the leash so that at some point your dog is going to realize there's not very much things to do in this environment except eat the treats and they might be more interested in the treats later. You want to refrain from trying to get your dog to eat the treats and putting the treats in your dog's face if they're not interested. Just put the treats on the mat or in the crate like you do at home and at some point the dog might think to go and eat those treats and that's a wonderful sign that they're feeling calmer in that environment. If your dog is really struggling and they can't take treats and they start whining or seeming stressed, you can go and practice this exercise in front of your house or in your yard or at home at first, or simply try the exercise where you have the dog in the car and are working on the settle in the crate. If you have a dog that gets worried or excited in new locations, you can choose a location that you think your dog is going to do best at to begin this exercise. So for example, if your dog gets overwhelmed in crowded situations, you might choose a place where, say for example, a baseball field that no one's visiting, where it's completely isolated to work on this exercise first, before then visiting another location, perhaps during the middle of the day when everyone's at work and uh, there are few people there, or or a place that not very many people go to to begin this exercise. However, I have to say if you have a herding breed or a dog that gets startled when there's nothing going on in the environment and then suddenly someone or a person with a dog come out of the blue, that can be very startling to some dogs. So choosing a location, for example, the edge of a parking lot or some grass, you know, in a mall that overlooks an area where there's some uh, foot traffic that's going back and forth on a path, then your dog is seeing an ebb and flow of people going by and they can relax seeing multiple people moving rather than nothing and then suddenly a person appearing out of nowhere. So um, this might be too close for some dogs, but we're sitting next to a pathway that people walk up and down. Um, so if you had a dog that was nervous, you could sit further away and then reinforce your dog for the people walking back and forth on this path. And I chose a pretty busy time uh, where there's lots of traffic going back and forth, cars and people. My little puppy has finished her puppy shots, so it's perfectly fine for her to go sniffing around in different locations. But if you're concerned that your puppy hasn't finished their shots yet, and you're not sure about the area, that there might have been dogs visiting the area that could have had diseases or illnesses, what you can do is visit somewhere and bring a large sheet or blanket, something even bigger than this if you want, and then just limit your dog's leash so that they can't reach the edges of the blanket or the sheet, and you can reinforce your dog for looking around at the world and socializing your dog to what it's like being out and about. You can also use a baby carriage uh, to bring your dog on outings as well as carry your dog in a bag or a backpack so they're seeing the world and getting reinforced and feeling safe when out and about as they're in that very important socialization period. The wonderful thing about having a dog in a carrier or in a baby carriage is that the other dogs don't pull and stare at your puppy and they can build a lot of confidence if they're a little bit worried about dogs. Once your dog is successful with settling in this environment, you can then take little adventures away from the mat and then return to calm your dog down again. So you can either do calm, sniffy walks where you allow your dog or puppy to explore the environment, or you can work on exercises such as loose leash walking or strong behaviors they already know. I don't suggest working on something new or adding criteria to any of your behaviors in a new environment. Instead, you wanna ask your dog for behaviors that are really strong. So I like to ask for behaviors that I've worked on a lot, such as attention and the attention game. Recalls are also great. Um, but if you're trying to get, the, get your dog to be calm, maybe I would work on something else besides an exciting behavior like a recall. Are you ready? So I'm gonna go on a little sniffy walk and let her investigate the environment. So I'm gonna say, let's go and call her off the blanket and I'm just gonna get this leash out from under her leg, whoop, and then let her sniff around. So you can have a cue for your dog to explore the environment, like go sniff and point. Go sniff, go sniff. If you have a dog that's more interested at staring at you or the treats, you can mark and reinforce 
for your dog sniffing around. And conversely, if your dog sniffs around a lot and finds it highly reinforcing, you can reinforce your dog for coming away from the smells and back to you when you say, let's go. Good. So if your dog is sniffing around, that's a time that you can mark and reinforce your dog. Good. For walking on a loose leash and not just staring up at you and hoping for the treats to come. Because if you just reinforce your dog for looking at you as you walk around, if you don't have treats or your dog's not looking up at you, your dog might think to start pulling on leash and not understand the concept of walking next to you if you're not in training mode. However, if you're working on exercises where your dog is at your side and you're using a marker word, a high rate of reinforcement, or a clicker like this, it's great if your dog is looking up because they're waiting to see what you want next. And that's perfectly fine. Are you ready, Epic? So we're gonna practice a little walk away and I'm gonna mark and reinforce her for walking at my side like this. Good. As well as stopping when I stop. Good. Let's go. Good. And she's gonna be looking up at me or looking towards the mat that she's then gonna relax on. Good job. Let's go. And the difference is that you see she's got her head faced forwards in a natural position and I can reinforce that on a normal walk. So when we walk around and she's just enjoying the environment, I can reinforce her and I can feed her in the direction that her head is facing like that. If you're out and about and you have treats and your dog is hyper fixated on your treats, you can give your dog a treat like this and then show your dog you have nothing and say all done and then go sniff, epic go sniff and then wait until your dog is invested in sniffing in the grass like that, good. And then you can mark and reinforce. So your dog is understanding, good, that by not paying attention to you is how they're gonna get the treat in this type of situation. So that then you can walk around and have your dog explore the environment without them hyper fixating on you and the treats. And when the treats are not there, that they completely ignore you completely. So that's what I like to do. In the same way that you would reinforce your dog when settling for looking around at the environment, you can do the same when the dog's standing still like this or when you're walking. So as I'm talking to you, I have a treat in one of my hands ready to give my dog. Good. And then the moment that she checks out and she starts looking around at the environment or as we're walking and she's sniffing, good. I can mark and reinforce so I don't get that constant staring at me, which if you have a young puppy, they're not going to be looking around at the environment and learning what the environment looks like because they're just staring at you. So I find it extremely important for building confidence that the puppy is also getting time to look around, explore, and sniff. If you're planning on training your puppy or adult dog when out and about, I first suggest warming up with the attention game or really easy behaviors that are your dog's strongest behaviors. Because if your dog isn't able to do just these simple things, then it's not a good idea to work on harder behaviors or add criteria or teach something new in a distracting environment. So as you can see, she's looking straight up at me and looking for the treat. Another test that you can do is mark with a clicker. And if your dog doesn't look for the treat or look when you say good or yes, look for their reinforcement, that tells you that in this environment at this point in time, the reinforcement isn't very strong or isn't reinforcing at all to the dog because the environment is too stressful or arousing. So um, I have a video on how to train the attention game and I'm gonna link that in the description below. But here's just a quick example. I'm gonna put a treat down like this and then I'm gonna make a kissy noise and mark and reinforce when my dog comes towards me. Putting the treat down in the grass gives you some time to get further away from your dog. Good job. If your dog is highly distracted by things in the environment, such as things in the grass, maybe rabbit poop, trash, or uh, dogs or people walking around and your dog is hyper fixated on those things, sometimes playing the leash pressure game away from a distraction can focus your dog in on one specific distraction to concentrate about, and it can be much easier for the dog to start to pay attention to you worrying about that specific distraction 
rather than no distraction they know about and they're fixating on things in the environment. So I'll link a video in the description below on how to work on the leash pressure game, but I suggest trying it out and, out and about if you have a dog that gets distracted by things in the environment. So basically, I'm gonna put a treat down out of reach from her over here, and then I'm gonna mark the moment that she turns back towards me. And we played this game before. So first, you're marking the moment that your dog turns towards you when they feel the pressure on the leash. And then you're marking and reinforcing your dog for staying with you with the goal of the dog completely ignoring the food on the ground and it's cueing the dog for default attention on you. After playing this game a little bit to warm up, you could then work on the behaviors that you wish to work on with your dog. Here's some footage of me working on a leave it game when out and about with my puppy Halo. I've set up little blocks of cheese on this windowsill and at first I'm giving him a verbal cue to leave the cheese and then next I'm marking and reinforcing him for doing a default leave it past the cheese. Let's go. Here's some footage Good. of me working with Epic. Instead of going on a skiffy Good. walk away from settling in the crate, Good. we're practicing walking at my side and turning when I go in another direction. Let's go.